psychoelectric start. The 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 psychoelectric start. Then there'd be a hum. And the hum would get louder. And louder. The psychoelectric would start. And louder. 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 To the point where it broke apart everything that I was or knew. Everything. 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 And louder. I just got louder and louder until you just had to surrender to the sound, to the sound. And, and then you were there. physical feeling and louder about an inch and a half two inches above my skull and it pop through there then the psychedelic trip would start the psychedelic 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 trip would start the trip would start the trip would start the trip would start the psychedelic trip psychedelic trip would start it would start I thought I died. The psychedelic I thought I died. Electric. I saw the white clouds. Uh, you know, the uh, Renaissance white fluffy clouds with the gods and the angels and all that surreal. And 
psychedelic trip would start. No. And Rick chimes in like the psychedelic trip would start. And Rick chimes in like the psychedelic trip would start. And Rick chimes in like the psychedelic trip would start. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And Rick chimes in like the psychedelic trip would start. 15 minutes. For a moment I'm shocked. I'm like and Rick chimes in like 15 minutes, you know. The mind, you know, has to try to catch up. The psychedelic triplets. Because now the whole cognitive dissonance of the experience has to, has to catch up. The psychedelic triplets, 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 a thousand years of experience. The psychedelic trip would start. The psychedelic trip would start. The psychedelic triplets, 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 the psychedelic triplets. The reason I think that shamanism is so important is because I think what it really boils down to is a revaluing of personal identity. And that when you strip away the feathers and the chants and all the anthropological uh, gimcrackery that goes along with it, what makes it so compelling and so attractive is that it is a more authentic state of being, somehow. Now, why? It seems to me that the reason why is because uh, Theories about the world are based on direct experience. The shaman is a kind of provisional scientist, making it up as he or she goes along, constantly willing to revise and keep it open-ended. And information imported from without is extremely suspicious, which is the exact opposite of the way science, for example, does its work. In science, if you have a bizarre result or a peculiar finding, you immediately say, well, go check the literature. See if anyone else ever got this before. Then get them on the phone and we'll see if we can't duplicate what they were doing. Uh, what this creates is what we have, which is uh, a vast, low-grade, inductively derived image of reality, where only those things which happen with the greatest regularity and the greatest predictability are authenticated by our languages. So we can talk about rain and sunrise and mealtime and obligation because these things are repetitiously before us to the point where they have become known as smooth stones are known. But what is not repetitiously before us is the edge of cognition, the unique part of our own felt experience of reality. And the reason for this is very deeply rooted in the culture. It's that we believe 
in these bizarre notions like consensus, like uniformity of phenomena, predictability, probability. I mean, everyone here believes in probability. Who here could explain it to the satisfaction of anyone? I mean, we are adrift and embedded in a matrix of unexamined linguistic excuses for avoiding looking at how weird it is. And that is what the shaman is not. The shaman, first of all, basically has no real history, cannot consult vast libraries, is not in touch with the reputations, the overwhelming, stuffy reputations of his antecedents hundreds of years in the past. The, the shaman can usually ask one guy or one woman older than himself, and that elder represents the, what for us would be an entire epigenetic cosmos of data banks, libraries, hieroglyphic records, museum drawers crammed with artifact, so forth and so on. So the shaman's intellectual horizon in terms of what we call historicity is very foreshortened. Consequently, everything has to be explained out of energy that is unleashed in the psyche, energy of speculation, of myth-making, of imagination. And this is, in fact, then what the function becomes and what the shamans are doing. They are not consuming culture. They are generating it. And herein lies the point for us. We must generate culture rather than consume it to the degree that we take this ideal upon ourselves. What people say, you know, is it enough to just clean up your diet? I mean, how can we react in an in a ever more stultifying political environment? And I'm very loath to try and deeply answer that because uh, I don't trust myself. I don't know what I'm talking about. But it does seem to me that uh, the great weapon is art. 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 Because uh, art is confusing. Art is confusing. Art hides a multitude of sins and can serve many masters at once. It is subversive. It is cheap to produce. And if we take seriously the notion that society is an environment, an ideological jungle of competing means, then it's reasonable to suppose that the most articulately and clearly constructed myths will in fact come to be. But he who, he who can tell the best story or she who can tell the best story will see that story come to be. Art is confu come to be. Art is con come to be. Art is conf come to be. Art is confusing. Come to be. Fusing. 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 This is what uh, the shamans are doing for their society. The shamans are doing, the shamans are doing, the shamans are doing, the shamans are doing, the shamans are doing for their society, for their society, for their society, for their society, for their society. They are exemplars. And this is a point that I want to make very clearly. Everybody else is just running around inside the culture of the form.
And it's very easy to run around inside the cultural form and never to question, regardless of what it is. And what in Western society is institutionalized as a vast edifice of
DMT, 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 DMT. And it's actually interesting, uh, you know, kind of the the grandfather of DMT research, and, and uh, you know, in this generation um, is a Hungarian psychiatrist named Stephen Dell. Um, he discovered um, that you had to inject, you know, DMT. So he emigrated to the U.S. a few years later, and he was probably the most experienced person out there as far as you know, giving people the MC. And we talked on the phone at length um, uh, just around the time my study was beginning, and I had asked him about, you know, is it possible to give too much to MC? Because I was still trying to figure out what happened with these two volunteers. I couldn't remember anything. Um, it was that very hard day. And, uh, Several people too much DMT, 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 and uh, DMT, they really couldn't DMT, remember DMT, anything other than something frightening. DMT, uh, that, DMT, um, DMT, yeah, DMT. So. Um, yeah. Um, so he was remembering how he had given a couple of people too much DMT, and uh, he recalled that all they really remembered was that something frightening had happened to them, and they couldn't remember the specifics very well. So, uh, sort of you know, kind of equipped with that inform extra information, uh, I realized we hadn't really sort of damaged anybody, but just had overloaded their mental circuits at the time, and uh, there was no point in giving those kinds of doses. DMT, 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 DMT. Humanity into the dark blood of its own secret heart. Is that any way to treat us?
doors and say, I am so glad to see you. I've been missing you. You know what I'm saying? It's like God called his child home and told him to come on in. <laughs> it's time to play and you can have the best time and you can be who you want to be right here and now. Forever. There's no censorship in heaven. <laughs>
exchange for military abduction. In my lab, just simply stands for military abduction, abduction, abduction. Now, some programs have come out, you know, like MK Ultra, Pay Ultra, Pay Ultra, Ultra. Uh, some of the, uh, the programs they did, you know, back in the 50s and 60s. And the 50s and 60s. Uh, in the civilian population, secretly. Well, before we'd even discovered genetics, we were delivering genetic changes to people through viruses, using viruses as carriers. That's also been done through um, vaccines to the general population. So, I was also identified, I was identified, I was identified, I was identified, I, I, I was definitely popping up on the radar for that. It, apparently I was identified as being, uh, there's a spectrum, intuitive empath spectrum, um, and, and I was identified as being well within the two which they thought would be useful, and they're able to uh, enhance that with genetic uh, manipulation. And then they slowly, they slowly started to introduce us to them. You would go into a virtual reality simulation, and there would be a couple of doctors, maybe uh, military, sitting at a card table, monk table, and then when you would go through the simulation and you would come out, and then there would be a gray, a gray, a gray, 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 or a, d a different type of non-terrestrial sitting at the table all of a sudden. No one would say anything about it. You would just get up and walk out. They would start to slowly acclimate you to these to these beings because it can be quite overwhelming. There were hybrid children. Boss, that's all you Gray. These programs. There were hybrid children. They're not safe. So for it, and it underground and I came back to serve. So they assigned me to this program that was called the Intruder Intercept and Interrogate, the I-3, I-3, 3, 3, 3 program. And the, it was similar to the Man in, Men in Black program, except of these beings finding out who, why they were here, who they were. A lot of times they were being, also, the, it's interesting, the, the Lunar Operation Command uh, is basically air traffic control for around a certain distance around the Earth. And, and they would work very closely. If a craft would come in, would not provide a friend or foe signal, they would be intercepted and, and, and interrogated. So, um, control over all evidence. You know, you know they're doing something important. At the end of the day, they know they're going to be isolated. That's something that's done fairly common. The Nazi, the Nazi, the Nazi origin, origins, origins, trace these species, species back to, you know, the real society, the real and the fool society, the real cells, real cells. Now, some of these Nazi groups were sending real cells out, small monks, real parties of like nine to a dozen men who were going through Tibet, and Arab monks, those of China, and uh, interrogating monks, monk, 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 monks, monks. Monks, monks, monks that were guarding monks, manuscripts, monks, and information. And they were all monks, still very interested in a Nordic type of non-terrestrial that many of these monk, 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 monks, monks were, 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 were in communication with. And they were protecting the internet. And they were references to um, where, and they were to it. And they were where they were, and the Nazis wanted to get in contact with them. Monks were, monks were, and of course Maria Orsic, I'm told, was able to definitely get in contact through her monk, monk, her, 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 her group, the real society, who, uh, if it was telepathic, they would begin to get a lot of very technical information that they were able to show to those. It wasn't she would monk is it monks were monk monks were monks were of course monks were quite a bit more than sixteen Thank you.
done by the, the corporations. It is joint, and it's stated as being joint ET and human, just because that the area down there is controlled by the non terrestrials, and we have to basically work with them, get permission, and observe what we do very closely. I can argue with that kind of you know, research.
I think God put you here to test my faith, dude. I think God put you here to test my faith, dude. I think I figured this out. 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 Sleep, fuck it, been restful, even fuck it, that fuck it, thought in their head. God, you fuck it, running around, fucking burying fossils. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. 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 We'll fuck, see who fuck believes fuck in me now. Fuck. Oh, I'm a prankster god. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I am fuck, fuck, killing me. <laughs> Giant flying lizard, you moron!
I've got to cut that out. The depressing fucking thing you will ever do. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, recession, depression. War, famine, death, AIDS. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, recession, depression. War, famine, death, AIDS. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, recession, depression. War, famine, death, AIDS. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, recession, depression. War, famine, death, AIDS. When you look out your window, it's just...
Thank <laughs> you.